loving overtures to reach you will make you more hard. Not because he's trying to make you hard, he's trying to soften you, but because your rejection of it will become even more emphatic the more he tries. Let me illustrate it by the sun. The same sun that melts wax hardens clay. What's the difference? The sun or the agent receiving the softening rays of the sun? If you are receptive like wax to God's love, it will soften your heart. If you are hard and reject that, the same love will turn you the other way. Did you ever pet a kitten and it purrs? And suppose you turn the other way and you're still petting it and the kitten turns around and you're rubbing its fur the wrong way. Did you stop giving loving strokes? No. The kitten turned in the wrong direction. And the love of God to somebody who wants to receive it will make them purr. But the love of God to somebody who's turned in the wrong direction will rub their fur the wrong way. God loves everybody. P. Perseverance of the saints. I don't have long to uh, linger on this point. But the extreme Calvinist believes that if you are elect, that you will persevere to the end, that you will ultimately be saved because whomever God regenerates will ultimately be saved. And the way, and this is the crucial thing, the way that you will know that you are elect is if you are faithful to his law unto the end. And if you are unfaithful to his law and you slip into sin, that's a proof that you were not one of the elect. So they believe that all of the elect are secure, but really nobody has full assurance that they're one of the elect. Because the only way you can know you're one of the elect is if you endure unto the end and are faithful to his law. I heard two great five-point Calvinists, whose names you would know if I mentioned them, give almost the same message. And here's what they said. One of them uh, believed in flying airplanes. The other one didn't, but neither of them would fly on Sunday because they believed it was a violation of the Sabbath. And they believed we were still under the Sabbath law of the Old Testament. That's another story. Paul said we're not under the law, we're under grace. That which was engraven in stones has faded away, Second Corinthians 3. But that's another story for another day. Here's what they said. If they took an airplane ride on Sunday after living their entire life serving the Lord and took an airplane ride on Sunday, which is violating the Sabbath, and the plane crashed and they died, that proves that they were not one of the elect. No assurance of salvation. The Bible says, I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. The Bible says, he has begun a good work, and you will perfect it, perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, no one can pluck us out of his hand, John chapter 10, verses 26 and following. The Bible says, that nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. The Bible says that right now you can be persuaded that you can have assurance that you're a child of God. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the sons of God. But for the extreme Calvinists, there is no assurance of salvation. There is security for the elect, but there's no assurance that they're one of the elect. Many of the great Puritan divines, as they approach death, uh, trembled because they weren't sure that they had been faithful enough. Second, I have good news for you. Second Timothy chapter 2. If we are faithless, he is faithful, for he cannot deny himself. You can be absolutely sure right now, tonight, that you're a child of God. Because as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. T-U-L-I-P, tulip, total depravity, 
unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints, they strike out on all five, five reasons why I am not a five-point Calvinist. But let me give you one reason why I believe what the Bible says. God is love. God loves all. God wants you to receive his love. Christ died for you. There's not a five-point Calvinist on the face of the earth who can consistently look at any unsaved person and say, Jesus loves you and died for you. Why? He doesn't know whether he's one of the elect. You can't go up to an unsaved person and say, Christ loved you, Christ died for you. I've got great news for you. I can look every one of you in the eye and say, Jesus loves you. Christ died for you. Christ wants you to be saved. But I can also tell you, he's not going to force you. Oh, Jerusalem, how often, but you were unwilling. Tonight, I hope you're willing to receive him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for your love, your unconditional love. Thank you that Christ loved us and gave himself for us. My heart goes out tonight. For people who may be here standing under Niagara Falls of God's love with their cup upside down, help them to join us who have turned our cup right side up and who are saying, my cup is full and running over. And may no one go away tonight empty, holding their cup upside down under the Niagara of your love, but persuade them to freely turn it up and to receive you. In Jesus' name, amen.